Hi, I'm Susan Keefe from Rhubarb and Cod, and today I'm overthinking chocolate lava cakes. I can't think of a dessert more synonymous with Valentine's Day. It's as decadent and rich as it is a little cheesy and overdone. Perfect for a commercially sponsored love fest. I really didn't expect this recipe to test my patience, but it did. My freezer is lined with failure cakes that I will likely be eating until June. The first go around, the ganache was so thick it didn't flow properly. The second version quite literally exploded out of the top of the cake. The next was overbaked, so the ganache was grainy. And finally, after more attempts than I'll ever admit to, this stunner emerged. The parade of overdone and underdone cakes were well worth the sacrifice because I think this is the best chocolate lava cake I've ever had. Or molten chocolate cake. Or chocolate fondant. Or molten chocolate lava cake. Honestly, it's hard to know what to call it when the internet is so content to call it so many different things. And that's the thing about today's episode of Overthinking Classics. Not only was the recipe difficult to perfect, the research was um, also a journey. Basically, my brain is now broken. There's a very simple story attached to this cake. So simple, I'm convinced it's not true, but I'll tell it anyway. Jean-Georges von Gerichten claims to have invented the cake in New York City in 1987. He claims he was attempting to recreate his mother's chocolate sponge cake when he pulled the cake too early, resulting in a molten center. But chocolatier Jack Torres disputes this story, claiming that a dessert, a similar dessert, but chocolatier Jack Torres disputes this story. <sighs> but choc- <sighs> but yeah, but yeah. I'll do it again. Oh. But chocolatier Jack Torres disputes this story, claiming that a dessert, that a similar dessert over there. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I implore you. But chocolatier Jack Torres disputes this story, claiming a similar dessert already existed in France. But what we do know is von Gerichten was responsible for popularizing the cake throughout the United States. Chocolate lava cakes are pretty much synonymous with American fine dining in the 1990s. A traditional chocolate lava cake is said to be a cross between a chocolate cake and a souffle, and is somehow different from the practically identical French dessert, chocolate fondant. You can see where I got into the weeds with this. But I didn't wind up making a traditional chocolate lava cake, which I guess defeats the premise of this entire series. But I will admit, I entered into the subject a little biased. I, like many food obsessives, saw Jon Favreau's Chef when it came out some years ago. And like most people who saw the movie, the scene with the chocolate lava cake left an impression on me. The Cliff Notes version of this scene is the molten chocolate cake center is ganache, not underdone cake. So that's what I expected to find when I started my research. I found no evidence to support this, but I still felt like it was a smarter method for a few reasons. Number one, you have a larger window of time in which to pull your cake. If you're simply undercooking cake, if you leave it too long, you just have cake. The worst you can do with a ganache center is have a fudge center, but more likely than not, it will be liquid. Number two, ganache is just another vehicle for flavor. You can stir just about anything into ganache, from salted caramel and peanut butter to orange zest and liqueur. Ganache center adds personality. And finally, you don't have to contend with the raw egg factor. Now, I don't really worry about raw eggs that much. I've eaten far too much cookie dough for that to be the case. But if you're feeding someone who's immunocompromised or pregnant, it's just nice not to have to restrict or worry. And trust me, you don't want to deny a pregnant lady a chocolate anything. So while the ganache center does not appear to be classic, that's what we're doing today. So let's get started. Let's start by chopping a whole whack of dark chocolate four ounces or 150 grams to be exact, 60% or higher, please and thank you. Now we're going to put together a double boiler to melt our chocolate. This ensures that our chocolate melts slowly and isn't shocked by the heat, which can result in scorching or a grainy texture. Fill a small saucepan about a third of the way up with water and place over high heat. Fit a heat proof bowl over the mouth of the pot you want a bowl that's small enough to form a seal along the lip of the pot, but not large enough to touch the surface of the simmering water. We want an inch or two of space between the bottom of the bowl and the surface of the simmering water. 
You want the water to be at a spirited simmer throughout the melting process. If it comes to a hard boil, reduce the heat and steer clear of any steam that might be escaping. Add your chocolate and stir occasionally until it melts. If the double boiler looks too cumbersome and you have a microwave you can trust, you can melt your chocolate there. Just be sure to melt it in 30 second bursts. Once your chocolate is melted, take it off of the double boiler and whisk in a quarter cup of creme fraiche. This was the extra flavor, sorry. <laughs> this is the extra flavor we were talking about. I feel like, uh, this is the extra flavor we were talking about. I was talking about, you weren't talking. This is the extra flavor we were talking about. I think creme fraiche brings a pleasant chang. Sorry. Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no respect. This is the extra flavor I was talking about. I think creme fraiche brings a pleasant tang to everything it touches, which is very good when you're being heavy handed with something as rich as dark chocolate. It brightens everything up a bit. Whisk in a quarter cup of heavy cream, then add a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt because every sweet thing deserves a kiss of salt. Next, add one ounce of Chambord. Chambord is a liqueur made from red and black raspberries, Madagascar vanilla, citrus peel, honey, and cognac. It's said to be modeled after a liqueur that was produced in the Loire Valley in France throughout the 17th century. How romantic is that? Once the Chambord is in there, cover your ganache and transfer it to the fridge. Chill for one hour or until firm enough to be scooped. While your ganache is quite literally chilling, we're going to make the cake. And that means we're gonna bust out that double boiler again. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Grease four half cup ramekins very thoroughly with butter and dust them with cocoa. Transfer the prepared ramekins to a small baking sheet and set them aside. Add 240 grams or eight ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips to your heat proof bowl. You can use better quality chocolate here or just chocolate chips. The chocolate you choose is less crucial when it comes to the cake. With a ganache, you have nowhere to hide, so put your quality there. I've made this cake with both chocolate chips and coarsely chopped dark chocolate, and I like them both. To the chocolate, add seven tablespoons of unsalted butter cut into cubes. Place the bowl over the simmering water and stir occasionally until the two melt together to form a cohesive mixture. While you're waiting for your chocolate to melt, pour a third of a cup of granulated sugar into a large bowl. Add two large eggs and two egg yolks and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Whisk until frothy. Once your chocolate has melted, take it off the heat and pour it into the egg mixture. Whisk as quickly as you possibly can. You don't want it to cook the eggs. Once the chocolate is well integrated, whisk in four tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Take the ganache out of the fridge and retrieve your greased ramekins. Using an ice cream scoop, place a scoop of the cake batter into the bottom of each ramekin. Place a tablespoon of ganache in the center of each ramekin and cover with another scoop of cake batter. Smooth the surface using an offset spatula. Transfer the ramekins to the oven and bake for 25 minutes. Not 20, not 30, 25 minutes. At 30 minutes, your ganache is lumpy and less lava-y. And at 20 minutes, your cake is, well, not yet cake. I'd learn this the hard way, so you don't have to. <laughs> When your cakes are done, take them out of the oven and let them sit for a minute or two to settle. But don't leave them too long. You still want the center to be liquidy, so make sure you have all your garnishes at the ready. Run an offset spatula gingerly around the circumference of the cake. Place the ramekin on a tea towel and place a plate on top. Invert the ramekin onto the plate and slowly remove it. Dust the chocolate lava cakes with icing sugar and garnish with a dollop of creme fraiche, fresh raspberries, and mint. And I really do mean it when I say, serve immediately. And that's everything I could think to overthink about these chocolate lava cakes. I hope you try this one. And if you do give it a go, let me know how it went in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to this channel. I post a new recipe every week and a ton of goodies along the way. Thank you for baking with me. I'll see you all again soon.